Uh, what kind of follow-up workshops do you suggest? And should you do a survey at the end of the session or send it out later? Which is a really great question. And what I'm gonna do after this is send you a YouTube video of Lottie Roberts, who's one of our, probably one of our most experienced facilitators. She's run 35, 40 workshops in the last year. And she's got a whole, we did a whole webinar with her on how to follow up workshops. And so um, Sophie will send out that link to you after the session so you can watch that. And it's about 50 minutes. So find a bit of time to, um, find a bit of time to put aside for that to add to maybe the masterclass you're going through. But that'll give you way more in-depth look at how she follows up workshops, how she um, structures them. But the one that I wanted to share with you, which is uh, my favorite way to follow up a workshop, is to do the ECD Tracker Canvas. So for some of you who are going through the course, you'll have got to the stage. It's right at towards the end of the right towards the end of the course. So you'll get a bit of a sneak preview of what I'm going to talk about here. But um, give me a second while I find the photos. So after you've run a session or a workshop with the team and you've defined the top five things the team wants to feel or not feel, a really simple and beautiful way to have a follow-up session later on is to, is to run this. Uh, this is not a workshop plan, but to run this exercise. So this canvas, um, and you'll learn more about it in the course, so um, a lot of gaps from what I tell you now will be filled as you get to that stage. But this team I work with here, the top six things they wanted to feel were proud, inspired, supported, connected, and courageous. This is a really high performing team because we then ask people to put a dot on the canvas of how they're not feeling it much, they're feeling it a lot. And it gives you a, bit, a really nice snapshot in time of where the team is at. And, uh, and what you can then do is decide as a team, maybe so uh, this is another team, I've just changed the orientation of this version of it because I only had a giant post-it note, I didn't have the poster. And this team wanted to feel unique, proud, open, supported, connected. And so, and challenged, they added another one, challenged. And so uh, I've run this type of work, uh, this type of activity in the past. And then we've picked one of the ones that's been maybe slightly lower in the trending. And then said, okay, let's run a start, stop, continue for how we could feel more of this as a team. So what do we need to start doing? What should we stop doing? And what should we keep doing? And that becomes a really simple little follow-up discussion, which one becomes a check-in, so we get a, temp a temperature check, maybe a word that you could use. Uh, and two, we can then use it to guide what, we, what activities we might do moving forward to help us feel more of these things. So, yeah, that's a bit of a go-to for me when I have run sessions uh, with teams. Run the Map Your Emotional Culture workshop, get to defining your top five for each, and then this is a really nice follow-up thing you could do a week later, two weeks later, a month later, whatever it might be. Uh, Funnily enough, in the, I think it might be in the remote teams course, but um, what I've also done with other teams, and I know of other teams doing, is that they've picked one of these for each month of the year. So they've come up with the top six, and they said, okay, for, what are we now? So for October, we're going to focus on feeling unique. And then they get together at the start of the month and do a team session where they come up with ideas for how they could feel more unique as a team. And then they'd run a whole bunch of smaller experiments on the activities they come up with. And at the end of the month, they then look back and go, okay, we're going to keep that one. We're not going to keep doing that one. And then they move to the next, they move to another emotion. And then for that next month, they focus on proud. In this example, they would have. And it's, once again, just a lovely way to continue the conversation month by month and focusing in on the things that are most important to the team. And then the beautiful thing is a government agency has done this for the last year. A team within a government agency has done this for the last year here in New Zealand. And at the end of six months, they then reevaluate, come up with a new top six, and then use some of this. Some might stay the same. In this one instance, they all changed because of the environment and how it had evolved so much. And then they did that again for another six months. And that was their year long way to use this card game within their team, which I love. When they told me that's how they're doing it, I was like, wow, can we please share that with everybody? Because that's just such a beautiful way to continue the conversation and focus, focus as well. Rather than going, we're going to focus on all of them all the time, all at once, we um, narrow our focus a little bit. Which is not to say that other things aren't important, it's just how we bring the team together, we then focus them around certain things. Yeah. Which is, if you're a coach or a consultant, a cool way once again to structure like a 12-month type of program for running something with a team. Yeah. Cool. So I'll just come back to our questions and see what other ones we've got to... Uh, Sarah also asked, do we hire card decks? 
how can you do it in cost? So uh, we, we hire Cardex, or we lend Cardex out, but only to our certified facilitators. So if you do level up and want to become a pro, then we then a few run workshops with 50, 60 people where we then send you, lend, uh, lend you packs of cards so you can run bigger sessions, but we don't, they don't that's like a little, a special um, exclusive thing for the pro elephant riders. So just so you're aware of that, because other people have asked in the past, do you lend out cards? Unfortunately, yes and no is the answer, yeah. Um, uh, and the last thing, we've got 10 minutes to go. The last thing I want to share with you, this is a, I've done this with two teams now, but I want, I'm, I'm interested to know if you guys want to test this prototype with me, an online check-in tool. Is everybody up for testing it? We can do it now on our computers. It'd be cool to share it with you. So the reason I designed this, uh, it's in Typeform. So I've just hacked Typeform. If anybody's come across Typeform or haven't, it's a really simple survey tool, like Mail, uh, MailChimp, uh, like SurveyMonkey, but I find it even simpler, even more intuitive. And I've just hacked Typeform and I created this for two reasons. One, when I run a workshop with like any more than eight people, if they write down their list of top five or take a photo of it, I used to in the past get them to email me their list so then I could then put it into a document that replayed it back to the leader, for instance, or some sort of poster that captured it all. And I th that, it turned out that that soaked up a lot of time, especially if, you, if you've got 30 or 40 people in a workshop and you have to go through and type out everybody's individual lists of what they want to feel and not feel. And it's just, unless if you've got somebody helping you, it's fine. But um, if you don't, it's, it can be quite uh, challenging. So one, I wanted to create an easy way to do that. And two, I also wanted a way to just get a, a temperature check or, a, or to check in with people about how they were currently feeling against their list of top five. And so I'll share it with, I'll send this to you. In fact, I'm just going to share my screen and show you what it looks like and then send it to you. And then after the session, you can test it and give it a go. Um, can everybody see the screen where it says, um, with the, uh, our logo on it? Yeah, cool. So um, when you get the link, just type in your name. This will all be confidential and only go to you. In fact, you don't even have to submit it properly if you don't want. If you just want to test it, you can. But if you want to use your actual list of top fives, please do and, and test it out. But you'd enter your name. And then it says, please enter your list of desired feelings. Uh, order them from one to nine, one to five. And so I'll just do it quickly here. So I go, um, I'll do my top one. So my number one thing I want to feel at work is free. And then the follow-up question is, how free have you felt so far this? I've used it with a cricket team recently. So it says pre-season, but I'd change that to how far have you felt, uh, how free have you felt this week or in the last week? And then you would simply click one, not at all, or 10 feeling it a lot. And then you'd put in your second one. So proud, uh, I'll change this before I send it to you actually because I duplicated it so I could share it with you now. Um, how proud have you felt this week? So you could change it to be this week or this month or whatever. Use the time frame that's applicable for the team that you're working with. And so you'd slowly then just work your way through these. And then if you only choose top three, click that. And then you do your undesired. So I'm comfortable, I don't want to feel that. And I've been feeling it a lot maybe. Um, and you just work your way through it. And at the end, you'll get emailed back your results. But if you're the leader of the team, you'll get a really quick snapshot, one on how people are, how people are tracking against what they've said they want to feel and not feel. But two, you'll also then have the list of people's feelings. So you can then just copy and paste them out into whatever, whatever format of presentation or, or document you're using to replay the results of the workshop to people. So it's sort of, it's like a two in one little thing here. Uh, and the, and the beauty is um, previously I'd just done the type form and I'd to get the top five and then I'd also done the check-in conversation. I was like, what if we just merge those things together? Um, so I thought I'll send you that link. Uh, well, Sophie will send that, that link after the session and you can have a play with it, go through it. We don't have this as a template. Sorry, you're going to have to go into, at this stage, go into type form and just build your own one. Um, one day in the future, we'll hopefully develop. In the meantime, which you might have gathered, I'm still experimenting a lot, even four or five years into this. I'm experimenting a lot based on what the workshops I've run, what my clients have asked for, uh, what all of you, like all the elephant riders, what uh, the challenges you're facing. And I'm still experimenting and building stuff and trying stuff. And I, and I ultimately hope that you also take that mindset to it. There is, a, there is a method and principles and a process you can follow, but depending on your clients or your organization, you can pull it apart a bit and use parts of it, not necessarily use all of it, Maybe use all of it or build things that might help you follow up conversations. That tracker canvas came from 
one of our very first pro elephant riders in New Zealand. And he was like, wow, how cool would it be just to visualize on the wall? He's an agile coach to visualize where the team's at on the wall. And I was like, damn, that's cool. Let's design a canvas for that. So if you do have challenges with your clients or ideas, please share them with us because it's one of my favorite things to do in the world is design new stuff to help you all to, um, to run workshops or with your clients because ultimately that helps everybody else because um, I'm sure we'll be facing similar things at various points in our journeys or our teams will be. So um, yeah, that's really like um, core to what we're trying to do is experiment, try new things, share ideas, be generous with our experiences because then we'll be able to help each other. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I've talked to people a lot and I'm maybe just starting to lose my voice as well. So this is quite good timing. Uh, thanks very much for, for coming along. I'm super humbled by everybody's, uh, by everybody's um, uh, interest and intrigue and curiosity and doing this course and joining our community and eventually becoming an elephant rider if you're not one already. Uh, at the end of it, when you, do join, uh, when you do finish the course, you'll be able to join our Slack group and there's about 200 of us in there where we're sharing more ideas and questions um, and that's the best way to stay connected long-term. But yeah, I'm hoping that was inspiring and you found, you've learned some new stuff and all those things fit together and will help you, will help you as you move forward. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Um, last thing, just as everybody leaves, if you've got your cards, does anyone want to go through a black card and hold up one card for how they feel at the end of the session as a little checkout exercise? And then just hold it up and we can just have a look. Supported. Nice. Inspired. That's cool. Energized. I love it. Supported. I've got connected. Connected. Snap. Sophie. I love it. Curious. Supported. Thoughtful. I love that, Audrey. Nice. Amazing. Epic. Uh, yeah, cool. Nice to, nice, to, nice to meet everybody. I'm looking forward to um, involved. I love that, Richard. Awesome. Uh, looking forward to staying in, in touch when you finish the course. As I said, um, joy. How cool. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to converse even more in the Slack group um, with Sophie as well, myself, and, and flick through questions to Sophie in the meantime. Um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how you get on with your journeys and experimenting and yeah, going forth and humanizing the workplace, unleashing emotions at work.